holiday baking is a fun activity that can be enjoyed by the entire, entire family. And Derek has a Santa approved recipe that is also really simple. He is also the Betty Crocker baking champion of the world. Oh, well, that last part <laughs> may or may not be true, folks. Uh, and I hope this is Santa approved. This is definitely one of my favorites. I actually got this recipe from uh, one of my exes. And now my family has been making this for years. It's become one of our traditions. Um, my ex's family, they're all British. And so this is the true English shortbread. And it's so easy. We're going to have a little shortbread and tea. Oh, lovely, dear. <laughs> you might want to work on your accent. Here, I'm actually going to trade you places, sure. Kirby, because I figure you should mix this up. Because okay. you're not really a baker, right? Not really. OK. I don't know if we have the ingredients on the screen, but here's how easy it is, folks. One cup flour, half cup butter. So I just start dumping? Quarter cup sugar. Just I hope so, because I in. am. And I'm a huge fan of making any sort of cookie, uh, sugar cookies, chocolate chip cookies. Now, normally you would start by creaming the butter and the sugar, and you really would want to whip them up. In this case, you don't want to do that. So you just want to put them all together. Let's lock that, and we're going to put it just on low speed there. So you don't have fly flour flying everywhere? Yeah, we'll start on, on low. Now, unlike a traditional uh, cookie, you don't want to mix this too well. You want to mix it just enough just until you can see the ingredients start to uh, start to congeal. You don't want to overmix this. Okay. And the reason why is because if you get the dough too light and too fluffy, it's actually going to become really difficult to handle. There again is the recipe on your screen. One cup flour, half cup butter, quarter cup sugar. The reason why it's so easy is because each one is just half of the previous ingredient. And then it goes into the oven, 325 for 35 minutes. By the way, we will also put this up on our Facebook page, so no worries we'll be putting the recipe up, even though it's super simple. Yeah, super, super simple. Now, I like to double and quadruple uh, my recipe, so feel free to do that at home, folks, because this does you make... You kind of want to get it to the point where it's crumbly. Yeah, so because this is live TV and we don't have a ton of time, I'm just going to take this out. See how crumbly this mixture is? See if Greg here can get a shot of that. So it looks really crumbly. It doesn't look like normal cookie dough, right? No, it doesn't at all. That's because it's shortbread Jennifer Broom. <laughs> so look, this is what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to take this round baking pan, dump it in there. OK, put that bowl down there. Now I'm going to take my fingers and actually just press this down. This is you could do with the kids. You could do it with the kids. Very, very easy. Or the big kids like you. Or the big kids like me. So I know it looks a little bit powdery, but as you see, as I'm pressing it down, it's becoming sort of like a pastry-like texture. Pop that in the oven, folks, 325, 35 minutes. When it comes out, you want to immediately slice it, then let it cool, and that'll give you little wedges. Here's another option. You can also form the, the dough into a ball. I like to use this uh, Carrera Marble uh, baking slab because it keeps the dough. Wait, you don't have any flour on there. Do you not need that with that? No, you don't need it. And also, by the way, if you're wondering, do not grease the pan because there is so much butter in this shortbread, you don't need it. So I got this, um, this little Wilton cookie cutter set, Amazon, it was like five bucks. And I love it because it just makes these nice little oh, square pretty. Okay, so you there. used regular flour. Can you also use, say, gluten-free? Yes, okay, so I did do a gluten-free version oh. of the room specifically for you and also Stephanie Gonzalez because I know you're gluten-free. Before I show you how well that turned out, oh boy. I want to show you <laughs> the, the pretty finished the version. The pretty finished version of just the regular recipe. And just with some sprinkles and sugar on top. Yeah, Fantastic. and when they're hot out of the oven, if you just dust a little uh, granulated uh, sugar on top or even some colored sugar, then... Um, you know, it gives it a nice finish. Also, I did try a whole wheat flour version. The cookies come out tasting a little nuttier, and they are a little darker in color. It's still good, right? <laughs> yeah, Hopefully. it's still good, but hold on. Here's the special gluten-free edition, guys. Oh, it is wrapped up. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, oh, no. <gasps> yeah, I know. Sometimes... I'm still going to try it. Really, uh... Here's the thing about it. It's like the Parmesan cheese crisp. <laughs> it was a melted, runny, disastrous mess. So it said on the box, the gluten-free flour, you could substitute one cup for one cup of regular flour. Don't Still do it, folks. Good, no, are you kidding? It's terrible. I have an aftertaste. So listen, folks, <laughs> we have <laughs> Alex, pretty good. Abby, and Hannah, our onesie models, who stuck around from segment Ooh, it one. It does have an aftertaste. I know. It's yeah. bad, right? The gluten-free didn't work so well. So Maybe here. Maybe an almond flour would be another option. 
move on over. And also, before we get to our taste test, I wanted to point out, if you just grab some cellophane and stack up maybe five or six shortbread cookies, tie them with a bow, this makes a great little gift. And I'm telling you folks, the finished product is He great. literally did these gifts in under 30 seconds, so I think it's a great idea. If you're going to a party, that's the regular kind, very nice. Would you like one? Okay, now, you have these special <laughs> hand signs. I didn't realize people are gonna be voting on the recipe, but know, why don't you take a bite, and then you Well, using, they're doing that. I'm gonna run a few out to the crowd. Using your ho, 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 or no, 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 tell us if you like it. Be honest okay. now, be honest. Ah, <laughs> oh, ho, 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 folks. So that's three, three yeah. hoes, three ho, ho, hoes. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, goodness, folks. Wow. Oh, my. That is not what I meant to say. But I'm glad you, you, you like it then. <laughs> they don't have mics on, but they're nodding in agreement. So, again, so folks. You got to give us thumbs up over there. Is it good? We have some people up. You like yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> All right. And I promise I washed my hands before I made those. That's, that's the first step of any baking project. But I love that this is super simple. It's something that you probably have the ingredients in your pantry and in your refrigerator. And you're good to go, ready, quick and easy. Do with the kids. Yeah, Fun. totally. And remember, be prepared to double, triple, or quadruple that recipe because you want to make a lot of these. All right, folks. Remember, we will post the website, the recipe on our website, rather, HoustonLife.tv, later this afternoon. And also, if you guys decide to try it at home, please, please, please post your photos on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter. Tag us so we can see how your cookies turned out. And good luck. I can't wait. And coming up next, 